Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today I want to tell you about 10 really fantastic sci-fi flicks you can currently catch included with your Prime Video Membership. So there are long periods where I go to Prime Video more often for movies than I do for Netflix, but the big problem is Prime Video does not make it easy to find what they have available, or at least not some of the good stuff. So I have scoured their entire catalog and found stuff that's currently included that are great, great sci-fi movies. Several of these are likely ones that you have missed, so hopefully you find out about some new great sci-fi movies to watch very soon. And keep in mind, these are available with Prime at the time of me uploading this video. They will not stay that way forever. However, unlike Netflix, they don't leave Prime. They're still available to rent if you want to pay money for them. But at the time of me posting, they are all included with your membership. This video is sponsored by Universal Yums, and I'll tell you more about their great snack service later in this video. But let's start all the way back at number 10 with certainly the smallest movie on this list, Infinity Chamber. Now this one plays out very much like an episode of Black Mirror or something like that. And I'll mention that show further down this list, but this one is small in its budget. And you can clearly see that. There's essentially one actor, a very small set, but they managed to make it work really well in my opinion. I think this is a really smart movie. I think it's got a lot of things going for it, for it being such a small movie. It's very interesting. You don't know where it's going to go or what's really going on. And the movie reveals what's going on in a very good way. It's very measured out. You're not going to really see things coming. For a movie that appears to have such a small budget, it's one of the smarter sci-fi low budget movies I've ever seen. Now my next pick is a really great but lesser known cyberpunk movie starring Antonio Banderas. This one does not look low budget. While it is a smaller movie than some of the other ones listed on this top 10 list, it looks beautiful. It's really well done. It's this grungy cyberpunk dystopian future. There are discarded androids all over the place. Dylan McDermott actually has a really cool role in this as well, but it's mostly Antonio Banderas' character. This is a really interesting movie for him to do because it's kind of small for him, but he helps carry it really well, and so do a lot of the special effects. A lot of the effects with the androids and robots look really great for a smaller movie that you probably have not heard of. However, it being this smaller movie, even though it takes place in this big cyberpunk universe, it's a fairly small, tight story where you're following one, two characters on this journey, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that. But normally when you see this big sort of expansive looking cyberpunk space, you get sort of a bigger, grander story. I don't mind the fact that this one is smaller. It's just worth noting because it's not usually the case in a movie that's as loaded with all the special effects that this one has. Now my next pick is the only movie that writer Stephen King ever directed. Now obviously this is also based on something he wrote, but Maximum Overdrive is kind of the ultimate grindhouse flick. It's not very good in a lot of ways, but in all the ways where sort of <laughs> Stephen King dropped the ball and didn't do a good job, over time those things have proven to be really entertaining. So there's some silliness to this movie, but there's also this very dark, hard edge to it. And I've always loved Maximum Overdrive because it really balances the two, I think sort of accidentally. But for those of you that aren't as familiar with this movie, this is the type of movie that when you used to channel surf before you cut the cord, which I would imagine a lot of you have that are watching this channel. But when you used to channel surf, if you came across this one in the middle of the night, very, very good chance it's exactly what you were looking for. Lots of explosions, crashes, appliances come to life, fair amount of blood and just a lot of fun. This to me is just a great one around Halloween time, but also just to like turn your brain off and watch something kind of old fashioned that just is a little over the top and silly. Now my next pick stars sci-fi screen icon Peter Weller, and he also appears in another movie in my top five on this list. But Leviathan came out on the heels of Alien and is very similar in a lot of ways. While I would not consider it to be quite as good as a movie like Alien, 
Again, it's similar in enough ways for Alien fans to absolutely love this movie. Just don't expect it to be of the caliber of Alien. And I think in most of the ways where Leviathan tries to imitate movies like Alien, it actually succeeds. Big picture wise, it's just not glued together as well, but the creature effects are fantastic. The sense of dread is great. There's a slow build. The, the sets and everything are kind of over the top. They're really, really elaborate in this one as they're working underwater instead of space. And it just, this movie works for horror fans. Again, space horror. Even though they're not in outer space, they're secluded underneath the surface of the ocean. So you get the same sort of claustrophobic feeling. If you're a fan of that genre, Leviathan is a fantastic watch. Now my next pick was directed by Steven Spielberg, and as far as sci-fi goes, it's one of his less popular sci-fi movies, but it's worth noting that this movie was produced by Stanley Kubrick before he died. So AI, artificial intelligence, is essentially a futuristic or cyberpunk retelling of Pinocchio. It's about this little android boy who wants to be a real boy. Essentially, you get Pinocchio. As the movie goes on, the similarities become more and more obvious, but Stanley Kubrick wanted to make this film. He was the producer for a very long time. Now, before he died in the late 90s, he never felt like CGI was far enough along to create this little boy, and he never felt like an actor could accurately portray this android that wants to become a real boy. So he ultimately gives this movie over to Steven Spielberg, and of course, The Sixth Sense comes out, Haley Joe Osment is like the hottest thing for a kid that age. His acting chops were kind of unheard of. They put him in this one and it does work. I really like this movie. It's a little over long. It does reach for the brass ring and I think they maybe just miss it a little bit, but I still enjoy everything that they tried to do with this movie. It's a big epic sci-fi adventure. And even though it falls a little bit short of maybe what expectations would be for Steven Spielberg, it's still a beautiful movie. So if you're sitting at home trying to figure out what to watch, you also might be trying to figure out what do I want to snack on during my movie. Here in this house, our movie snacks come from Universal Yums. They're today's sponsor. I highly recommend this service. It is a snack delivery service. You get a box delivered to your door every single month. They come in three different sizes at three different price points, and each month it's a surprise because it comes from a different part of the world. In addition to just being a bunch of sweets and chips and all sorts of interesting little things that you would have never been able to try or find anywhere, in addition to that, they also give you a lot of little information and fun interactive things that you can do with all of these snacks. I get the big box and it lasts us quite a while. In fact, there are plenty of times where we've got a lot of stuff left and the new box arrives. I absolutely love it. It's something so different and fun to do. And I've said it here on the channel before, me and my wife make an evening of it. We pick out a movie that sort of pairs well with whatever country that month's box came from and we taste test them and talk about them while we watch the movie. It's a lot of fun. It's a fun way to have sort of a experience that's a little different from what you do every other night of the month and at a time when it's hard to go out and enjoy yourself because of fears of coronavirus this is a really great way to have sort of an unusual night at home but let's continue on with the rest of these unusual sci-fi flicks now my number five pick is probably one of the least seen on this list maybe tied for my number two pick but Memories is a collection of sci-fi anime shorts. I say shorts, they're each about 30 minutes, so they're not that short, but they each have a different look, a completely different story, and you do not have to be an anime fan to enjoy these. These are very, very accessible. They're just animated. Fans of the Black Mirror series should really dig this. You do have to read subtitles. They're well worth it. The visuals in this one, particularly in the opening short, are just amazing. It takes a little time getting in, so you want to give this one 15, 20 minutes, a little more time than you might give something else, but the payoff is there. And I'll also say, it's well worth watching with subtitles. It's also well worth watching with sort of not good quality. This is not a good remastered version of this. It looks a little like watching something on VHS. The color's not quite there. It's a little bit fuzzy. Not terrible, 
but certainly lower quality than most other things that you'll find on streaming services. That said, I still put this one at number five because it's that it's that incredible. If you like my recommendations, you want to watch something you haven't seen sci-fi related, at least watch the first of the three shorts included in Memories, and then you can check out if you don't like it because I think it's maybe the best one out of the three. Now, my next pick is an 80s cult classic sci-fi flick, and it's a great template for how to do rated R sci-fi action movies correctly. That's the other movie starring Peter Weller, and that's RoboCop. He actually plays the RoboCop. If you've never seen this movie, you need to watch it. It's sort of a rite of passage. If you're a movie buff, you have to watch RoboCop. But if it's been a while since you've seen it, you may have forgotten how cool this movie is. There's the weird little patriotic commercials. There's a lot of blood, a lot of wild references. It's a little over the top, but in a really just sort of pitch perfect way. It's got the perfect tone for what it wants to be. And then of course they bastardized it years later when they did a PG-13 version that had nothing in common with the original or at least didn't have the proper tone that this one nailed. And just as an example for maybe my younger viewers who have not seen RoboCop, Deadpool was sort of the rebirth of the rated R action movie. They did it right, it made a ton of money, it had a tone very, very similar to RoboCop. It's not the same type of movie, but a very, very similar adult tone that's also just a lot of fun to watch. So if that's not enough reason to watch RoboCop, I don't know what is. And then we leave that 80s movie to go to one of my favorite 80s movies ever. And yeah, it didn't make it to the number one spot, but Escape from New York, I just love everything about it. It's one of my favorite John Carpenter flicks. I love the music he did for this. I love, love, love the character of Snake Plissken. He's just like the movie. Kurt Russell plays this character over the top. It's an edgy character, but it's also a little tongue-in-cheek. It's got this perfect, again, pitch-perfect 80s thing. It sort of defined a subgenre, and I love it for that. While I would hate to see a shitty remake for this, I would love to see a great remake for this sometime in the future. I think it's possible to do that with the right people involved, but you know how Hollywood is. They will probably f*** it up, but the original is the original. It's remastered. It looks great. It's a fun sci-fi action flick. It's grungy. It's dirty. If you've never seen it, this is a top tier Darren Van Dam recommendation. It's easily in my top 100 movies of all time, might be even in my top 50. Cannot recommend it enough, but there are two other sci-fi flicks on Prime Video right now that I do think are better recommendations. Now my number two pick is one of the least known ones on this list. It is foreign language again, but well worth reading the subtitles to in Time Crimes. Now this is a time travel movie. It's clearly that, but it's unlike any other time travel movie you've ever seen. It takes place essentially in, I wanna say one location, but you could maybe say two locations, and it is very confusing. It needs to take place sort of in this small space that doesn't change much because it is so confusing. You will have to work to keep up with the subtitles, but the payoff is well worth the extra effort. This is like some Christopher Nolan, Memento level stuff. It's not similar in the way the story is, but just in terms of kind of how mind blowing it is and how smart the screenwriting is in this one, it's next level stuff. More people need to know about this movie. If you clicked on this video, you want to watch something you haven't seen that's interesting, that's going to put some extra wrinkles on your brain, you got to watch Time Crimes. Now, you probably didn't notice, but most of these on this list feature little to no CGI effects. Now, largely because of when they were created or because of the budget. Movies like Infinity Chamber just don't have the budget for things like that. And for sci-fi, that's kind of rare. So it's interesting that that's sort of a theme that follows through in this one. But my number one pick ushered in the age of CGI as it was the first big budget movie that had real actors interacting with a realistic CGI created character. And that movie is The Abyss. Now this is directed by James Cameron and he did it shortly after creating Aliens. Aliens itself doesn't have CGI in it, but The Abyss does have this water creature. And only a short time later, a few years, 
he does Terminator 2 with the liquid metal effects, and then Jurassic Park comes out shortly after that and changes the game. But the Abyss is very important, not just for the CGI, but a lot of the effects. The underwater effects were still all done in miniature and not CGI, so you get this sort of beautiful mix of old school practical effects that look stunning. The Abyss looks like it could have been filmed yesterday, and a lot of shots look better than most of what you would see today with CGI effects. And I'm talking mostly about the underwater submarine shots. They look incredible. Not only that, this is an incredibly epic movie. It's almost two and a half hours. The amount of stuff that goes on in the character arcs and the double crossing and the peril that they repeatedly get into in this underwater base is next level stuff. It really is this amazing epic. It's a fantastic sci-fi flick. Really just a, a gem that has stood the test of time over decades. And if you've never seen it and you're sort of starved for big blockbuster stuff that we didn't get this summer because of COVID, this is a great replacement for something like that, especially if you've never seen it. But let me know in the comments below what you plan on watching. Also help me thank the Patreon supporters. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description as well as a link to become a channel member right here on YouTube for a monthly fee that does go to supporting the channel. You get access to exclusive videos. On my main channel page, there's actually a list where you can see the type of content that I've been putting out for members only. They all have the purple border around them. But however you choose to support the channel is greatly appreciated. I will keep making videos like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this episode, and you will see me on the next one.